Hi, I'm Tim Roble and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Today is physical build day 14 and let me show you what I've uh, been doing the last couple of days. So I laid out some uh, frame rail which is two and a half by two and a half by 253. It's basically the female trailer hitch. I am stitching this to this cross member here and gonna tie this all in. But before I did all of that, you can see here I got cut marks, trying to figure out how to get all of this down through the frame. So I came in with the hole saw, three inch, and uh, put a, a strategic hole in the in one place, and I cut down, cut across, and then I lined this with a uh, hose material and got that set up. So this is where the new location is for the anti-lock brake module. And uh, I'll, I'll do this all in boxes here, so that, that'll be easy to uh, access. <clears throat> but... Uh, Packaging on this wasn't, a, and it never is, a, a simple task. Um, trying to get everything to make sure the lines are, uh, or the cabling is long enough. Um, sometimes you need a cable stretcher, which doesn't exist. But um, coming in and getting this, uh, I guess this is a transformer, junction, junction box, whatever you want to call it. It's where all the positives come in and um, getting that tied in. So I welded that up to this, this structure and got that uh, down low. I had to disconnect uh, this and move it down below this. And I uh, just try to get everything as low as possible. I ended up um, drilling my um, mount for uh, the airbag leveling and got that all installed. And so this side took me about half a day to get all of this um, looking well and, and kind of uh, packaged in, in, a, in a good way. We'll walk over here to the other side and um, trying to figure out where that air hydraulic pump was going to go. I even thought about getting rid of it. Um, I just kind of like the idea of having the extra uh, reservoir on it. So for now, it's going to sit on top of this, uh, the fuel tank. And I think once I get this structure built out here, I'm going to have it sit in one of these arenas, maybe even back here, I have plenty of hose. They're, they give you enough hose on this stuff. So maybe I'll put it uh, back here, uh, do something that's a, a nice bracket, easy to get to. Um, it was just flopping around on top, like trapped in a box. And so I want to I want to put it in a spot where it's easy to get to, easy to service, and uh, go from there. Um, same thing uh, that I did on the other side is I packaged all of this here. Um, you can see that I turned the cab tilt sideways. And by doing that, you have to uh, break the, uh, the fittings loose on each line and make sure that the line is uh, how you want the, the hose to run is with the natural lay of the hose. So I've got that all knocked out. Uh, found out my uh, fuel gauge uh, line was too short. Um, it was originally going up and over the frame here, so I just drilled a hole through here, deburred it, and ran this uh, through. I still need to put a zip tie on here to keep this connected. Um, I am doing uh, boxes that will come down and will hide all of the fuel tanks and they'll have access doors to, uh, to climb in, so it's not going to be as easy just to walk in and touch as, as what we see here. but. Um, still you know thinking about access and being able to get access to stuff uh, i got the hydraulic pump mounted it's a little further out than i would prefer um maybe flush with what the the box is going to be but uh next exercise is uh, getting the donaldson filter uh with the tracks off grid um here's his kit comes with these uh lines he's sending me another filter so Today, um, I think I may cut and turn and kind of get the uh, the piping coming out of the uh, the, the turbo. Um, get that kind of set up, but I think I'm going to focus more on laying out uh, the main rails of the box and taking measurements. Um, the two pieces of tube that you see sitting here are 10 feet long, and I got uh, new pieces ready to go that are 20 footers. So that would make a 30 foot box. But looking at the aesthetics on that, I, I think the box is gonna be, as we're speaking right now, 28 feet. Um, it wouldn't hurt for me to stick those pieces up in place and uh, just take a quick uh, look at it 
and let's see what 30 foot looks like. But I think it's gonna be too much of an overhang. Basically usable frame rail back to here is uh, 20 feet. We were at 19, but now going up and tapping into the bulkhead, um, right this furthest part of the frame here is is 20 feet. And that sits about, I don't know, maybe eight, eight feet or eight inches back from where the tire terminates. So that basically would mean I have 10 foot behind the tire. Um, I have, uh, my original plan was to put the entry door in front of the tires, but as you can see, that's going to bring me into much needed living space and I don't want to do that. So the rear door is going to be here. Um, it will be 32 inches wide. Um, it will extend out to the uh, furthest part of the box and still low. So um, it's not going to be like a uh, height. So you're going to step in to this like one, two, three steps to get up to here. And then there will have a, uh, I'll have a door, um, like once the garage, once you're not using the garage, that door will hinge down and cover the stairs. Um, so you will actually enter into the garage and then head into the main cabinet, cabin that way. And the back is going to be a ramp. Um, I have a magnetic, um, drill, a mag drill to, uh, Drill some holes in the frame here that I got in, but I'm going to use it today and go ahead and do some um, some holes in the tube, and then I'm going to sleeve this with the uh, the two by two male receiver um, that's 250, and that'll so that'll make a the junction here will be a full uh, half uh, half inch thick uh, for the continuous run. Um, I did end up splicing these at the uh, the spot, and there will be a cross member that will tie in between the two. So lacing up some uh, chassis today, that's pretty exciting. Um, that's pretty much what the plan is right now. Um, I'm sore again from lifting all of these uh, pieces of tube. I, uh, I got a truck in yesterday from IMS, and um, I guess it just depends on who you talk to, if they're gonna deliver to you or not. But I got a hold of the right guy. I ordered three more lengths of the two and a half by two and a half by 253. So um, those are 150 pounds a piece and I didn't utilize the truck driver at all to unload anything. So um, yeah, I'm a little sore from the uh, the heavy lift from the street, 150 pounds back here three times and then just the overall work. But um, it looks like I'm gonna lose about a foot of uh, box space kind of in the center area and then a little bit pushing out on where the air cleaners are. I'm gonna make the center section um, like right here as we're looking at it. I'm gonna make that a um, removable panel. So if I ever needed to access anything in the top here that I can go troubleshoot that, I can pull that from the inside. But uh, as we're looking here, you know, the box starts here and it's gonna come up and then it's going to follow the cab line up. And um, so you can see right now, I've already lost, you know, from the cab, I've probably lost the first two feet, but uh, that's gonna be all right. I'm gonna basically do a, uh, a tie-in right here. Um, well, maybe right here, two, a full two feet back. And then that's gonna have a slant from the top of the cab back. So it's not gonna be a square um, box because working on aerodynamics on this big thing is going to be huge. <laughs> Actually, it's a, just an aesthetic, just a look that I, I want. Um, you know, I've had several people talk to me about putting a shipping container on the back. And why I'm not doing a shipping container is it's just, it's set in stone. I would rather build my habitat up and around and form it. And I hate to start with a, a something and tear something apart to kind of modify and build something. It's much better to have a... a blank sheet of paper and platform and just be uh, fluid as you go. So that's how I'm doing the build. Um, I am bolting. Um, that's been a big discussion right now. I am going to bolt the um, main rails to the uh, the chassis. That's uh, and then like up, up front, that first section will be welded in. If there is any flex in the frame, which I know there's got to be some, but this is a pretty massive slab here um we're at a full half inch thick with these two right here um the the uh the chassis um 
will flex a little bit underneath the box with the uh, with the bolts. Not a, not a whole lot of wiggle room, but uh, Stuart and Stevenson designed these vehicles to have a cargo bed or a wrecker. Everything you see here had bolts through it, and that's what was used to um, you know put a crane on or a bed or whatever. However, they configured the truck, and I was lucky enough to talk to one of the engineers on that. And um, he confirmed with me he would not do a articulating like a expedition mount, like a two point and a three point or a floating down the center. He would he would do on these trucks um, just like they are originally designed for multi use, and he would bolt the box to it. So with the exception of welding the, the first couple of places in in the front, and then in the back, I'm also going to have a uh, massive weldment. Um, Although I will bolt the top rail with the last available um, uh, space, um, it's going to be bolted and welded here in the back. Um, so if there is some torsion, I am going to put a cross member um, across here and here. And then from here, it's going to go um, at an angle and come back and tie onto my bumper, which the rear bumper is going to be the 2.5 by 2.5 by 253. Um, and then those also going to have some uh, uprights that go up because that's where the spares are going to mount, um, kind of like my adventure truck. So anyway, that's kind of the uh, the plan in the uh, the shot for today, trying to um, you know, just lay out the flatbed. We'll see where I get. Um, it's uh, physically it's Friday. I'm looking forward to um, going out tonight and just kind of enjoying a nice night. So I'll probably terminate today around five o'clock ish and, and do a really good cleanup. Working Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then we have some uh, business to attend to, and then I will be back out at my dad's. So it's going to be here in the next four days is going to be the uh, then really knock some stuff out, and then from there on is going to be um, go out and spend my week with my dad. Looking forward to that. I know he's looking forward to it, and um, just kind of recover and then get back to. Um, I'm hoping to have a flatbed done by then or real close to done and then start building up, which is exciting. That's the part that I'm looking forward to doing is really getting getting this box, um, the shape and the spare tires and everything on it. That's what I've thought about for the last seven months. And I'm finally at that stage with pushing through some of this harder stuff. Uh, hands are beat up, I'm scraped, burnt, cut. Um, that's part of the fabrication process. Uh, when you're going through hell, keep going, don't stop. Um, that's my, my thoughts on this is just keep pushing. Although you're uncomfortable. Uh, the other day I had a bolt down underneath the air tanks that held, uh, the tube going to the air cleaner. That one bolt took me over an hour and 20 minutes to get that off. It was just a quarter turn, flip the wrench, quarter turn. It was, you know, I had a WD and PBB lastered and all kinds of things. Uh, even wire brushed it to try to get as clean as I could, but that bolt was very tough to turn and it was just a, uh, I ended up being really sore the next day for it. Um, it's just keep pushing, keep pushing forward. Like if you get stuck on a packaging issue over here, go work the other side and do something that you can do and let your mind think and it, maybe it'll solve that. Um, I did think that I was done with waking up at uh, two and three in the morning, but uh, no, that's, that's back. Um, it seems like uh, 2 30 to 3 o'clock in the morning I wake up and then I am up I might as well just get out of bed um because I don't go back to sleep but I'm excited about this is I feel like I'm fully living and getting to build a dream that's been in my head and um man I'm super passionate about it. I'm tired worn out but I'm pushing and I'm looking forward to a uh, end result on this which is going to be probably six months down the road but is what it is so anyway, that's going to be it for today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of your views, comments, thumbs up. Um, I really do uh, like the YouTube community and um, people that are interested in these kind of trucks. You guys are good people and uh, it really helps for the positive support. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Tim Rubble and I'll catch you here next time.